Hi. Um, and I'll be brief because I've got to get my daughters to violin. Oh, okay. uh, but I, I live here in Providence. I am a um, former NASA research scientist and uh, engineer and manager at Google. Uh, and most recently, um, I'm also leading a group here called Climate Action Rhode Island. And I think a lot of us who are scientists and also parents are just becoming progressively more freaked out about climate change as I hope all of you are. And you know, as our Senate Environment Committee, you are our, our frontline protection. So we're, we're counting on you to take the action that's, that's needed to protect us. And I'm just going to um, briefly relate a metaphor I heard recently, which makes a lot of sense to me, and I hope it's the way you think about it, too. We, humanity, especially Rhode Island being the ocean state, have jumped out of the airplane, and we're falling. We're basically in free fall towards the ground. As our carbon blanket thickens, as the atmosphere allows less and less heat to escape, you know, we're into a regime of destabilizing the climate that supports all life on Earth. So it's sea level rise on our coast is almost, you know, just a minor issue or one of so many threats between the crop failures and the, you know, the climate refugees who will be causing global instability and um, the increased storms, droughts, you know all this. But it is like we're in free fall. And what the science says you know, we hear from the oil industry about, well, is it politically realistic to, to make these transitions, make these changes? But on the science side, there's physical reality. There's the literal physics of, can life survive if the layer of heat-trapping gases around the Earth keeps getting thicker and thicker with no action? So we're in free fall. We have a parachute. It's on our back, and the parachute is stopping burning stuff, stop emitting carbon into the atmosphere. So we just have to pull the ripcord, and that's the action that's represented by the Global Warming Solution Act. It's actually do, you know, take the political steps which we need to save ourselves, to literally save our lives and our kids' lives. So and it's also the case, as you know from this metaphor, that it's, it's possible to wait too long and you can pull the ripcord and still <coughs> die if you don't pull it soon enough. So what our group believes, what I believe the overwhelming majority of scientists who study this believe is that time is running out to pull the ripcord. We actually need to, to take political action to forcibly transition away from fossil fuels to renewable energy. And so, that's what this bill does. It takes the goals that we've already stated as a state, but it actually forces us to meet them. And I, I just don't see why in 2018 that would even be controversial. So um, yes, it's going to be hard, and there's going to be people who need to um, do something tricky with their home heating systems between now and 2050. You know, but but you know, we'll we'll get through this together if we take that action. But please, don't just let us. Keep free falling. You are our Senate Environment Committee. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Justin. It's, it's amazing how many sometimes that you mentioned we are in 2018. There are a lot, so many things going on in our nation today that I can't believe are going on in 2018. So. <laughs> Oh, yes. Uh, we have a question. Well, Senator, actually, 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 just more of a comment, and especially you coming up here and, and stating your background as a NASA scientist, and I think, you know, what the space program has gone through over over the decades of, of you know, aspirational dreaming and thinking, and then the defunding and moving away. And I think that part of, you know, what I you know, think about when I put forward this bill and when I think about this issue is that aspirational thinking yeah. about how do we move our economy forward, how do we move our state forward, how do we protect our environment, which is actually a human issue. I love the birds and the trees and the ocean, but you're right, if we cannot survive on this planet, you know, because our climate is so destabilized, 
And I think that it does. It just takes some aspirational thinking. So if your background as a NASA engineer, as a NASA scientist, is very compelling uh, addition, yeah, I think. Thanks, and I'm still in touch with some of my friends and colleagues back there who have worked on Earth observing satellites, who've worked, you know, NASA is a major, you know, source of science for the climate that we understand uh, and the changes that we're seeing. So, let's put that.